Hi, it's Adam again. We will now be taking we're still on C, but I'm going to show the disk method. Again, this isn't something that you would normally do. But uh you know, because the shell method is significantly easier with more a less simple approach. But in case at we ever had to do that. It's nice to see that this method and shell method both work. Uh, it's just one's always easier than the other. So the disk method, again we're going for volume, f of x equals x squared. Got that same same bowl shape that we're going for. But this time we're going to make disks. And the part that makes this a little bit more complicated is if you see uh, you're going to have disks with a width from here to there. <laughs> My son's running through the room. Okay. Uh, so this disk is going to... Uh, you know, normally you think of that you would have a full disk like that, and it would be that entire area. But now all of these sections are going to have a hole in it. And you're just going to have the area of this sort of uh, ring, not that center section. So, you know, if you took just that and you rotate it around, you would end up with this ring. Um, so that is obviously something you need to think about when you're um, working on it. I mean, how do you work out a disk problem? Uh, they, you're going for the service area, which is pi r squared times that uh, the height of that disk, which is of course just uh, uh, h. And this change in, uh, yeah, h is just a change, but I'll, I'll just write that out. r equals h equals. h is that change in y, so that's dy. Since we have dy, um, that means that we're going to want to express the radius in terms of y. That's going to obviously make our life significantly easier. Um, so normally we find just the radius. You know, we would say that the radius is equal to whatever. But this time, it might actually be able, you know, it might be easier to think of this right here as a unit. So I am going to cut that out, and I'm going to say that pi r squared equals something. And the reason that I'm doing that is, if we took pi r squared, you would get for the entire ring. But now we can say that uh, the if you had the entire ring minus, I'm oh, sorry, if you had the entire disk minus that inside disk, that would then equal your surface area of each ring. Um, so what would be the, you know, if you had this entire disk, what would that surface area be? Well, that would be pi r squared. What would r be? r would always be x equals 3. So that means that you would end up with pi, basically 9 pi. You know, pi r squared, uh, 3 is the r, that becomes 9 pi. But you need to subtract this distance in there. And that distance in there is equal to... Yeah. <laughs> if you take the function here um, and you... You know, you need this inside. I'll put this here. That's the y-axis. So you need that radius here. The radius from here to there is simply the x value uh, and what is the x value? The x value is simply the f of y. Okay. And what is the f of y? No, sorry, that's the f of y. Of course, that's the radius squared times pi. But what is the f of y? Well, the f of y, you know, this is y equals x squared, therefore x equals square root of y. So we can put that in. We get 9 pi. That's a pi, Jesus. <laughs> Minus the square root of y squared. 
times pi. Square root of uh, y times, or I'm sorry, uh, to the second is of course just y. So now we have 9 pi minus y pi, or pi y, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, we can simplify this out and say that it then equals pi times 9 minus y. And that is what that equals. So we can now say that pi r squared together for each ring is pi times 9 minus y. So we're not going to be finding just the radius here. You're going to just go directly to, to the surface area. So what does that <laughs> tell us here? Um, if you set everything together, you then get that v equals pi 9 minus y dy. Uh, and that's not so bad. Um, it actually looks like it's fairly simple. Um, so this is just going to be the volume. You want, again, all the entire sums of all of those rings. Um, so you're going to get pi times the integral of 9 minus y dy. Um, but now we need to find out, you know, where from where to where. Well, we are taking from, uh, you know, it's going to be this area here. We're going around the y. Remember, these are washers, or uh, I'd say wash rings. Uh, it'll be from the bottom to the top. You know, each ring is just going to work its way up. So that means we're going to be taking volume pi from 0 to 9. That's a 0, not a 6. 9 minus y dy. So since we're starting at the bottom, remember this is a whole figure, from the bottom all the way up. Um, when you, you know, integrate that, you are going to get that v equals pi. My oh, pi's are getting worse by the second. Bracket. Now, uh, what's nine? That just becomes nine y. Um, and then you're going to be subtracting y squared, and of course that would be half. And then you're going from zero to nine. Zero on this, of course, becomes zero. So we're only looking at the the nine value here. So y then equals pi, 9 times 9 is 81, um, and then this is minus, you know, 9 times 81 divided by 2 is 81 over 2. And the 0, as I said, doesn't affect anything. So um, that means that v equals pi times 81 minus 81 over 2 is just 81 over 2. And again, you know, this becomes v equals 40.5 pi. Again, it does not match. But again, it's because of these washers take that entire distance. So we need to cut out everything that comes in that section. So again, it's going to be this function here. Uh, it's going to be going around. It's going to be a new bowl without a hole in the center this time. Um, and this is obviously easier with the shell method. So since it's easier with the shell method, I will work it out with the shell method. The shell method, as you saw up here, you know, we can use this exact, uh, this exact same, uh, layout. So you get that V equals 2 pi R H D X, R equals X, H equals X squared. Remember, so this is, you know, the radius of of um, each of these shells. These these shells here. Um, the radius is just going to be that x value from here to where it is, because we're finding circumference, two pi r circumference. Therefore, the radius is to the to the uh, edge, the cont. And then the height is the function itself, which is x squared. And that means that the volume of that then becomes 2 pi x to the third dx. Please remember the, the, uh, the, the thickness of that shell is the dx. I should have mentioned that, but whatever. 
So you're going to use the exact same setup as you had up here. The difference is, is now you're going to take 2 pi, the integral of x to the third dx. Um, remember we're working with x's, it's from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And we say that v is equal to, in brackets, uh, if we integrate that, that is x to the fourth divided by a fourth, or multiply by a fourth, I assume. <laughs> uh, so divide by four from one to zero. Zero is going to give us zero. One is going to give us, you know, one to the fourth is one times a fourth. So v equals one fourth. I'm sorry, I forgot this. It's two pi out here times 2 pi. So it's 1 fourth 2 pi, which of course becomes 1 half pi. And if you look up here, how much were we off by? A half pi. We subtract 1 half pi, and you get that v equals 40 pi. Same answer, different way of doing it. Of course, you would use the shell method, but if you need to use the disk method, this is the way you would think about it.